Thanks very much, Chairman, and thank you, Minister, for your um, patience. Um, it's been a long hearing so far. Um, uh, first question I'd like to ask is, um, when the Chairman came before the committee um, last week and he was questioned about whether and why he, he, he decided um, not to inform you or the Garda Commissioner um, under Section 85 or 102, um, 102 being the one that puts the obligation um, on, uh, on the Ombudsman. <laughs> Um, he said that he, he 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 said that he believed. I'm paraphr paraphrasing, but basically he believed it was the right thing to do at that time. Um, you don't seem to agree with that assessment um, from the chairman of the commission. Um, so I'm just wondering, uh, Minister, whether at any stage in your private meetings with him or meeting with him and the other members of the commission, whether you actually um, asked him. Why? Uh, what was the reason um, uh, as to as to why he felt he couldn't or ought, ought not inform you or the commissioner? Um, why he felt it was was not the right thing to do, um, and if he elaborated any reasons for that. Um, secondly, um, you said in your statement last night that the chairman in his presentation to the Joint Oireachtas Committee clearly did not accept that the technology referred to could only be obtained by government agencies despite the statement to this effect in their security consultant's report. And you said that you did not reference it in your speech to the Dáil last week as the chairman clearly placed, and I quote, no reliance on that advice, and this is clear from his own comments to the Joint Petitions Committee. Um, I, I assume that those comments um, that you refer to are the responses from the chairman to questioning from me um, at the hearing last week where he said, this is the world that we live in and the kit that used to be only in the hands of government agencies can be replicated. Um, so again, I, uh, what I would like to know is, during your meeting with the Ombudsman Commission um, last week, did you or indeed did any of your officials um, who were present at the meeting ask the chairman of the Ombudsman Commission or any other member of the commission their own views on the Verimus report's findings that the specialist firm indicated this level of technology was only available to government agencies? Or did any member of the commission voluntarily um, express the view um, on the specific Ver Vermis report um, that they placed no reliance on its advice. Um, and if so, could you, could you elaborate a little bit more what was said to you privately at that meeting? Uh, I assume as Minister for Justice, um, and uh, assuming that you regularly, uh, as Minister for Defence as well, get briefings from technology um, experts in the army, the police, etc., um, or indeed from outside parties, um, that you would have um, you would have reason you would have reason to to question um, the the credibility of Ver of Veramos and their findings. Um, so perhaps you could just elaborate on whether you probed that uh, and whether you did in fact establish that there was no reliance um, placed by the Ombudsman Commission or the Chairman um, on that advice. Um, can I ask a third question? Yeah, yeah, three questions. Um, I'm, I'm very curious about um, the, the, the RITS report, which was um, commissioned. I understand commissioned by the Department of Justice or by you as Minister for Justice. Um, I'd like to hear a little bit more about how, when, why, what was the tendering process, if there was one, um, how long um, RITS took to actually carry out the report. I'm not clear on when it was Commission, so I'm not clear on how long how long um, the company spent on that report, um, and I suppose the, the the question of reliability of that report. I mean, it seems to pretty much uh, contradict everything <laughs> from what I'm hearing from your evidence today. Um, that was contained in the Verimus report about the security sweep, about the three different elements, um, etc. Um, and are you satisfied that that, that it is an entirely independent um, um, company? Um, I, I, I note that it has done a lot of work uh, for government departments to date. Um, I don't believe that Verimus has done any, at least not to my knowledge, done any work um, for, for government departments. And I think it is important if we are to 
to rely on this um, report from Ritz, which seems to have been very hastily put together, obviously is based on um, a, a review of work already done by Vermis, but not on any first-hand experience or any first-hand um, um, investigation of GSOC headquarters, um, uh, whether, whether we can have full confidence in it, in it and its veracity and its authenticity and its reliability. Well, let's take RITS first. Um, RITS are an Irish company. Uh, they are an independent information security consultancy. They have been delivering services to Irish clients since 1990. Uh, it is uh, it a company that does not sell any security products. Uh, it has been retained over the years by many organisations in both the public and private sector, including the Garda Shikoda Ombudsman Commission, to do certain, some security work for them, not the general sweeps that we have made reference to. Uh, they have acted as information security advisors, as well as being retained to deliver highly technical, uh, complex uh, services, such as digital forensics and penetration testing. Uh, they are frequently called upon by the Irish media to comment on current IT or IT-related security issues. Uh, they have done work for government departments, and uh, there was absolutely no time to engage in a tendering process, Deputy, in the context of the urgency of dealing with this matter. And because they are a body uh, who are recognised as having expertise in this area, they were asked to do a, a peer review of all of the relevant information and the reports received uh, from Verimus and to advise on it. Uh, in relation to the peer review, would you, have your department advised you that RITS RITS would have the same experience and technological expertise in relation to surveillance and counter surveillance as Verimus? Would, would you see both companies at the same level of competence and expertise? Because so, right. you're comparing like with like, it's an important well, of course, their, their, their mutual level of competence and expertise is something that may be uh, addressed and considered uh, by the judge, so I don't want to comment on Either, but I'm asking you I'm level asking of you. expertise. But I'm been asking but, you because you presented the, yes, the evidence from Ritz, so yes, I'm asking my, you in your department. My, my departmental officials' view, and they may want to comment on this, was that they were an appropriate company. I, I didn't know the company myself, but that they were an appropriate and reliable company to carry out a peer review. <coughs> the peer review might well have concluded that all of the information that Verimus uh, gave to GSOC that they agreed with. I mean, I, I didn't know what the peer review was going to say, and during the course of the peer review, they, they asked... Uh, Minister, uh, would you like one of your department officials to so maybe Perhaps I'll just finish this for a moment, because okay. I, I just want to come finish the other questions that the deputy raised. And during the course of the peer review, I think they had some queries about the equipment in GSOC's offices, and I know there was uh, a, a, a request made to GSOC's offices to clarify some matters in relation to, the, to equipment, and, and I think, as I understand it, the clarifications were provided. And I, I didn't know what the outcome of all of this was, but I felt, bearing in mind the, uh, uh, the level of concern about these issues and the complexity of the matter, and indeed the nature of the reports that I received, and this, which I, I looked at very carefully, that it was important that we, we have that engagement, and that it was no more, uh, no, no more, uh, no more than that. Um, the um, Deputy Crichton also raised that when the chairman came before the committee. Um, he, he detailed, he made references to uh, not giving me information. Uh, what he actually said, as on page six of the transcript, is with regard to why the results were not reported, the report was in my possession only just prior to the Christmas break. I had to think very carefully about the need to report matters to the Minister and other parties. At the time, I made a strategic decision not to report what could be described as suspicious activity that did not meet the threshold of an offence. My decision making at the time, just prior to Christmas, looked at the potential damage that could be done to public confidence if these suspicious activities were in the public domain. We'd opened up an investigation under Section 102, subsection 4, and the threshold test was achieved. Uh, but by definition, any likely offence might involve a Garda member. Now, can I just stop there, Chairman? Um, I don't know that the threshold test was achieved, or why, by definition, any likely offence might be involved a Garda member. Uh, and you see, these are conclusions that were reached in the absence of evidence. Uh, and that is a matter for the judge to look at. Clearly, there was a view that there were vulnerabilities, potential threats, 
and the conclusion was reached to evoke section 104 subsection 2. He went on to say the level of public disquiet about allegations the Gardaí might be involved in that type of activity was immense. I took the decision alone not to report at the time. And then later on, he says he regrets, he regrets not informing me. Look, I, I don't want to make any more of it than it is. The commentary that from both myself and on Taoiseach with regard to me not being informed arose in circumstances where this matter came into the public domain in the Sunday Times where it was presented in a particular way and where I received no briefing. Under section 103 of the legislation, there's a word, shall, and the minister shall be briefed. Section 103, subsection 1, when an investigation of this nature takes place. Subsection 2 contains provisions in it which allow GSOC to determine, in particular circumstances, they won't brief me. Now, and, and, and I've heard members of the House saying, well, that, that means that they didn't have to brief me. What it actually means is they didn't have to brief me if GSOC as a collective group met and made a decision that one of the specific provisions under 103 subsection 2 were invoked. And I'm, I, I'm not... Sorry, do you want to clarify, Deputy? Well uh, it's not my question. So, sorry, go ahead, Deputy. No, hold, hold on, Deputy, is your question being answered? Sorry, Deputy, is your question no, no, being answered? No, my, my question was simply, I mean, uh, my question was specifically in respect of the decision of the Ombudsman not to inform you whether in your private meeting he elaborated on the reasons for that. No, I think he apologised. He didn't elaborate. He, he, and did you ask him? It's, oh, it's I asked him, yes, why did I learn of this in the newspaper? And, you know, why, if it was a Section 102 investigation, was I not informed? And, and, and his explanation, because I don't want to mis misrepresent in any way, his explanation was consistent with what's on page 6 of the transcript, which he, is he got this before Christmas and he considered uh, whether he should do it, and he didn't. But, but and, and he now regrets it. But, and it was no more than that. But, but there are specific statutory obligations. And GSOC operates under statute, and they're, they're twofold. The first is that when an investigation is commenced, there's an obligation to inform the minister, quote, of progress, unquote. No such report was made. Now, I'm not aware of whether GSOC met as a collective group and decided, because of an issue arising under section 103, subsection 2, not to report progress. That has never been suggested to me, and it wasn't, I think, suggested to the committee. And then you get to the stage where the investigation is complete. They should have met again as a collective group and decided, should they or should they not report. Simon O'Brien has apologised. Look, let's be realistic about life. No one makes the right decision on every issue all of the time. Uh, and I'm not, I have no interest in pillaring any member of GSOC in any shape or form. But it shouldn't happen that something of this nature that no one can say it's not seriousness. It's occupied a week and a half of Oireachtas' time and a substantial amount of this committee's time. No Minister for Justice should be in a position where they only discover that this type of investigation was undertaken and that it was concluded with a conclusion, no guard of misconduct, no definitive evidence of surveillance, without the Minister being told and the Minister having to discover it in a Sunday paper. And, and then what is my obligation as Minister? My obligation as Minister is to ensure I then have information to furnish to members of the Oireachtas. Uh, without a, receiving a report, can't do that. Uh, sorry.